Okay, there's always a question towards the end of a piece, how much detail is necessary? And this is has a lot to do with your temperament. Uh, I tend to like uh, busier paintings. I still want to have a strong value pattern, but there's something about that sensory uh, perception that I was talking about, you know, feeling the textures and the, the busyness of the scene and uh, being interested in that. Uh, so, I may push it a little bit more uh, towards that direction, uh, but you may feel like you want to have a little bit more order and less of that uh, chaotic uh, vibe to it and back off on some of these details. And so, that's something that you find out and it's something that has to do with, uh, you know, stylistically, what do you want to add uh, to the scene and what do you want to leave out? Uh, so, you have to make that a call and that decision. Uh, for me personally, I like to have just a little bit more information, nuance and color. And I associate those things uh, with the quality of kind of the past masters where they had a lot of kind of nuance going on and layering of colors and, and, um, and subtlety of, of textures and, and uh, of light, of the light. And so, that's, that's something that I'm always kind of striking a balance with. At the same time, the more information you cram into a, a scene, the more you are going to have to um, uh, be careful to not uh, overdo it and put too many uh, tones and values in it. Uh, the other thing that I try and do when I add some of these details is you can see that I've used uh, a little bit of a tiny brush to create some of these details, but also I can create some uh, interesting detail work with a larger brush that is really chiseled. It's a kind of a newish sort of brush that is has the ability to really hold an edge. Uh, so, those kinds of things are uh, important as well. So, even after uh, the film is done and, and the painting is uh, a finished, quote unquote finished, I will still leave it uh, as is for a week or so and then come back to it one more time and just see if there's anything that bothers me. And mainly what I want to do is go paint some other paintings and just, you know, get involved in some other things and almost forget about this piece, forget about it that I even created it and kind of try and go back to it and see it as an uh, independent party and just kind of do an audit on it. And uh, I'll find that I'll need to knock back a, a thing or two or adjust a thing or two in, in order to make it completely finished. And again, I feel like that's an important part of making something that is uh, of uh, high quality. And again, I think that's something that my galleries expect from me and also my collectors. And so, I, I feel like there is definitely a responsibility to them. You know, when somebody invests in your work, they are, uh, you know, making an investment not only in the work, but in, in, in you as an individual. And, uh, you know, it's important to me to have that level of quality uh, in my work and that care, even though maybe a lot of people won't notice it and it could be considered uh, a waste of time by some, you know, to add those kinds of levels of detail and, and care into it because very few will actually appreciate it. But again, I think uh, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's kind of a legacy that you're leaving. And so, you want to um, push yourself to the, the level of quality that you know, just speaks um, to the consistency and the uh, care that you have in making uh, a, a painting that is uh, you know, worth signing. And one thing I've found is sometimes I've, I get a little rushed and I, I understand that there's kind of a reality you have to deal with beyond just the painting process. You know, I'll have deadlines for one man shows and things like that. And sometimes it's, it can be overwhelming to get enough work in. And I think in instances like that, maybe you push a painting to a level that you think is, is good and then you get it even to the gallery. And there are some paintings where I've yanked them out, even though I have framed them and everything where I'm like, you know what, that is not, that's not really my level of quality and, and I need to get rid of them. And so, uh, I'll ask for paintings back uh, from galleries if they just don't meet that standard. And in the rush of, of things where I, I try and get it and I'm like, oh, well, that's good enough. 
uh, you know, I have to remind myself that, you know, sometimes in the moment you can't make the right, uh, the right call on it. And a couple of times, you know, I've, I've, I've let paintings into galleries where they, and they've even sold some of them where I wish, you know, I just didn't have them out there. And, you know, they come back to haunt you sometimes. And I know every artist kind of feels that way, especially, you know, artists you talk to, they've had a long career. They, they're like, oh man, there's, there's some paintings where, you know, I just wish I never let them out of the studio. And sometimes it's, you know, you're just painting the best you can as you're doing it. So don't be, don't be too worried about that. What I want to motivate you is, is not to, um, I don't want you to get, oh, you know, OCD about it, about not letting, you know, mediocre paintings go out the door. But I do want to push you to, uh, you know, you say that it's a quality work to still set it aside, come back a week later and make sure, yes, that is a quality work. Uh, and, you know, it's important to develop that really critical eye when you're making a piece. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this process of creating this old alleyway from uh, Delhi, India. <laughs>